Hello, my friends. Welcome back again. Vaults Remastered. Today, we're going to be continuing a little bit of basic training for Pathfinder because there are so many stinking rules. How do you keep them all straight? Especially if you're a new player like myself, a new new GM, right? I've only really been playing since the remaster rules came out in, uh, what was it, November. So it's only been a couple months and there's lots of rules, lots of things to know. So I've been trying to dig deep, get into the so-called basic actions, and figure out what they do and what they mean. And the second one on my list is what this video is about, and that is crawling. And when I first looked at this, I thought, wow, this is going to be a slam dunk. I can knock this sucker out in like 60 seconds, maybe two minutes tops. But then I started digging deeper. And there were some things that have me scratching my head trying to figure out what was somebody thinking when they came up with this one because, quite frankly, I don't get it. Let's take a look. Let's see what's going on. Crawling. It's a move action. It takes a single one of your three actions to do it. In order to crawl, it says that you have to be prone and you have to have a speed of at least 10 feet. And then the move crawl allows you to move five feet and you have to stay prone. So this is where things get a little bit confusing because I have to have at least a 10 foot move speed to crawl five feet. Now I get the idea that I can't crawl as fast as I'm walking. I'm okay with that. But I can only move five feet. Not like half my speed, but five feet. So in order for me to cover the same distance that I would walk with my character, which average character walks 25 feet, I would need to crawl five times. I would need, I would need to sit here and take five separate crawl actions, which is almost two complete turns to move the same speed I can move with a single action on one of my turns. Has anybody actually measured this? Is your crawling speed actually one-fifth your walking speed? That's where I'm kind of scratching my head a little bit. That doesn't seem right to me. Now that aside, there are other issues, other problems I see with this action. I have to be prone in order to crawl, which, okay, I get it, right? You're crawling, you're, you're down low. But the prone condition causes some problems, right? You're lying on the ground, you're off guard, so your armor class is too lower, meaning you're easier to hit, which kind of makes sense, you're crawling. And you have a minus two circumstance penalty to attack. So if you're trying to attack while you're crawling, you're minus two to hit on top of that. And then it says the only thing you could do while you're prone is crawl or stand. So once I'm crawling, all I can do is crawl or stand up as far as a move action goes and standing up will end my prone position so I can't crawl anymore which is another problem in a second and then it says that you can take cover while you're prone which is great to hunker down and gain greater cover against range attacks even if you don't have an object to get behind so this seems pretty cool I can take cover get greater cover even if I don't have something to get behind, which boosts my armor class four, but I'm off guard, which is minus two. So I'm not sure how that jives too well. I'm taking cover. I get a bonus of four to my armor class, but I'm off guard, which if I recall, that's minus two. So in reality, I only get a plus two to my armor class for being prone. And I can't attack with Jack because I've got a minus two. And I'm moving super slow. So that is kind of, hmm. And I'm only covered to ranged attacks, not to somebody next to me. Now, what else is a problem here? So I'm crawling. I'm prone. The only thing I can do is crawl again, which barely gets me anywhere. Or I stand. Well, standing must be free then, right? Uh, no. Dropping prone in the first place to get prone takes an action, and standing up takes an action. So if I wanted to drop prone, crawl somewhere, and stand up on the other side, I can't do it. 
I take one action to drop prone. I then crawl a whopping five feet, which isn't really going to get me anywhere in game terms, realistically. And then I need another action just to get up again. So my entire turn would be down, crawl five feet, stand up. Where and when in the game is that ever going to be useful? Right? I've just spent three actions. That's my entire turn. Go ahead and try this in your next game and see how many times your teammates scream at you like, what are you doing? Okay, this, this economy doesn't make any sense to me. Now, I hate to say that it gets worse, but <laughs> it does. Let's say you're crawling for whatever reason. Let's say you have to crawl. Um, let's say your environment you're in is some narrow tunnels. You're in like a cobalt warren or something like that. And those pesky little humanoids have uh, tunnels that are only like two and a half, three feet high. And you just can't stand up. You've got to crawl and shimmy through them. Okay. That's what you have to do. Or there's a hail of arrows coming and, you know, you're crawling to take uh, cover behind some table or stones or, so, or a battlement or something like that. Okay, I got to crawl. But remember, you can only move five feet to crawl and you had to take at least one action to get down prone in the first place. Shouldn't drop prone be a free action? I don't know. Just, I digress. Now, let's talk about how this is going to get worse. From a GM perspective, I have to start thinking about this. So one of my players has dropped prone. Let's look at the prone incapacitated issue here. So if you're prone, you can share a space with a, or somebody can share a space with you if that creature's willing, unconscious, or dead. So if you're crawling and somebody wants to get in your space, you have to be willing to let that. Or you, And I would imagine it's vice versa. If you're crawling, you can't just crawl in somebody else's space unless they want you to. So, obviously, your ally would probably let you crawl past them or through them. But, if it's an enemy, you can't just crawl through them. And crawling is a movement, and movements provoke uh, reactive strikes, attacks of opportunity. So, you can't just crawl through your enemies. So, that creates a problem. And then it also says a prone creature can't stand up while someone else is occupying its space. So if you're prone and you're crawling and you happen to end your five foot movement in an ally's space, you can't even stand up anyway because your ally's in that space. So you have to be able to crawl into an empty space just to get back up again. Okay. It does say you can shove somebody out of your way. So there is the shove uh, attack, but go back to the prone condition, you are minus two on attack rolls. So that means your shove won't be as effective because you know, you're know you in a less leverage position. So are you really gonna be able to shove somebody? Maybe. Now there's a couple other tricky little things. If you're playing on a grid, don't forget the diagonal movement costs more, right? So you're moving five feet. Now here's, here's the mind blowing one. I'm crawling. I can only move five feet with an action, but I want to move diagonally. Here's what the diagonal rules say. Because moving diagonally covers more ground, you count that movement differently. Uh, Pythagorean theorem here, you know, A squared, B squared, C squared. So C is the hypotenuse diagonal. Uh, it takes more movement to cover that five foot diagonal than a straight five foot left, right, or forward, backward. So it says the first square of your diagonal movement in a turn counts as five feet. So I'm crawling, I start my turn. I crawl diagonally once, I can get that five foot move. But then the second diagonal move counts as 10 feet. So I would need to spend my other two actions just to move another square. And let's say I've done something else on my turn. That means I can't even move at all twice. So let's say I drop prone action one. I then wanna crawl action two and crawl action three. But if I'm crawling diagonally twice, I can't move at all the third time because I'm restricted by this second one counts as 10 feet. That's a problem. How about difficult terrain? You're in difficult terrain. You know, it's gravelly, rocky, viney, slippery, whatever's going on. Difficult terrain impedes your movement. 
moving into a square of difficult terrain or moving five feet into or within an area of difficult terrain if you're not using a grid costs an extra five feet of movement. Well, crawling already is my total five feet. So you're saying if I'm in difficult terrain, I can't move at all? Or it takes me two actions to move just one square? And what if I'm moving diagonally through difficult terrain while crawling? You basically can't move, right? I've dropped prone. One action. I now want to crawl, but I'm in difficult terrain. Oh, no. That takes, I guess, two of my actions, or I don't move at all. It depends on how you interpret this rule. You're screwed if you're trying to crawl through difficult terrain. And then there's uneven ground. Now, here's where maybe there's an advantage, depending on how the, the GM would rule this. Uneven ground is an area unsteady enough that you need to balance or risk falling prone. Well, you're already prone, so you can't fall prone if it's uneven ground. So let's say you're crawling and maybe it's difficult terrain, but maybe it's just lumpy, bumpy terrain. Now, if you're normally walking, you would have to do a balance check or fall. So maybe crawling is a better option on uneven ground because you wouldn't fall prone. You could just go. Maybe. I don't know. So maybe there's an advantage there. So these are just some things as a GM. I'm just trying to figure out, well, damn, if my player has dropped prone and is crawling, they can't really occupy other people's spaces unless it's an ally and if it is an ally they can't stand up unless they get out of that space if it's an enemy they're going to get reactive strikes on them probably or they can't move through their space anyway if they're moving diagonally they're barely going to move at all or have to consume all of their actions if it's difficult terrain they can't move at all or consume all of their actions uneven ground might be the one circumstance where it's it's beneficial so you can see where I'm having a problem with this, this action. It seems hella expensive to use it. I, you know, if at least if it was half your movement, you could justify some of this stuff, right? Or dropping prone was a free action. Standing up was a free action, you right? I mean, that would be, obviously, standing up free action wouldn't be the greatest because, you know, the whole reactive strike stuff. But because it has the move tag, it shouldn't matter even if it's a free action. Anyway, let's continue because it gets a little bit wonkier because the other thing it says is that the part about taking cover because taking cover is another action. So let's say you're like, I want to drop prone to take cover and crawl. Well, drop prone, move, right? That's an action. Crawling, that's an action. Taking cover, that's an action, right? Now let's take a look at this because... There is something in the GM's core that softens the blow a little bit on take cover. Because that to me is the one reason that you might want to crawl. Is you want to take cover when you don't have cover. Right? There's nothing to hide behind. So you duck down prone and start crawling. That would be the only reason I could think of purposely doing so. Now what it says in the GM core is that taking cover, you'll often need to determine whether someone can take cover. They usually just need a large enough object to hide behind. Now, according to the, the ruling here on crawling, you don't even need an object to hide behind. Uh, imagine the character crouching and picture whether the object could almost directly cover their silhouette. Taking cover might also require them to drop prone. So that's what we're talking about. You drop prone, you, you've, you're crawling, right? And then it says here that most of the time, you can let them combine these instead of using two separate actions. So... You know, the, the nice GM is probably going to say, yeah, you can drop prone and take cover as single action. I would rule that way, especially given all the other penalties you're about to suffer. But if you're playing with a hardcore GM, imagine that, right? <laughs> dropping, uh, dropping prone's one, taking cover's two. Oh, you wanted to crawl. Oh, it's diagonal. Sorry. Oh, it's difficult train. You can't move. Oopsie. What are you going to do? Oh, you want to crawl 30 feet to the other side of the room while taking cover? Because each turn, I get, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, maybe when you take cover, do you have to keep taking cover in each turn subsequent to that? I don't know. I have to look that rule up separately. But, you know, I'm assuming if you move that you're going to have to take cover again, right? Like if I'm ducking behind a pillar, I've taken cover. As long as I don't move, I still have that cover. But if I then move to another pillar, don't I have to take cover again as another action? So if I'm crawling... 
and I've dropped prone to take cover. If I move, crawl, do I have to take cover each time? Or, hey, if in that circumstance, you're prone, you're crawling, you can just be taking cover. It's a free, free action or something. Because I can see the benefit, because it sounds like it gives you greater cover, plus four to AC. But remember, that's being countered a little bit by the uh, the fact that you're, um, you're uh, what is it, off guard. Yes, you're off guard, so it says you remain off guard. So you're, it's only really a plus two, so that's kind of misleading, right? Uh, but the other thing here is you have a bonus on reflex and stealth checks. Reflex saves and stealth checks. So I think maybe that might be an advantage. You know, there's stuff incoming fire. Uh, you can get a little bit of cover, right? Uh, you can get advantages. I'm not advantage, but you get bonus to those reflex saves. You get uh, stealthy because you're, you know, crawling. Although that part to me seems a little bit wonky. If I literally don't have actual cover, I'm just ducking low and crawling. How is that going to make me stealthy to be able to hide from somebody who's shooting at me 30 feet away? So that's where, you know, I don't know that this necessarily applies stealth. You know, I don't know. So that's the only reason I can think why you'd crawl. Unless you had to crawl. You had to crawl because the, the terrain was such that, you know, you're in, like I said, like a cobalt layer and you're trying to get through these tunnels because the little, little, little suckers have set up, you know, these narrow little tunnels for you. Big folk can't get through. But, man, I'm not sure this was thought out too well, to be honest with you. Just all these other requirements, you know, you're crawling, you can only move five feet, huh? Could that be maybe just half your speed? Maybe that's what it, maybe this is a typo. Maybe maybe there's something wrong. I don't know. I gotta, I, I'm going to Google that real quick, or I'm going to check real quick. Is there an errata on the crawl action? Be right back. Okay, so I looked, and I don't see anywhere that there's errata. The only thing that I did find that helps me, or helps explain this total sucky action, which nobody in their right mind would be doing, is that there is a feat that allows you to soften the blow a little bit. So let me, let me see if I can pull this up. See if this makes sense. All right, so there's something called Nimble Crawl. It's a second level feat you can get. Uh, expert in acrobatics. So if you're acrobatics, and you have to be an expert, not trained, but an expert, you can crawl incredibly swiftly up to half your speed rather than five feet. If you're a master, you can crawl full speed. Legendary, you aren't flat-footed. So there are ways to get out of it, but man... I would never ever crawl unless I had nimble crawl. And this, okay, this is where the one thing about Pathfinder I don't get is that there are a lot of suck ass things at like first level, entry level that they're so bad that you would never do it. This might be an, this is a great example of one. And the only way to make it not suck is to have to go in a certain feet direction. And even if I want nimble crawl, is it really that great to like, hey, uh, I'm picking this as my second level feat, right? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go acrobatics. I'm an expert in acrobatics, right? I'm gonna go nimble crawl as my choice. And so now I can move at half speed, woo. So, you know, now I'm moving 10 feet because most people are moving 25 feet. So half of that's 12 and a half feet. I think you round down, right? 12 feet or uh, 10 feet, so two squares. And still that diagonal thing screws you. Still the difficult terrain screws you. So even nimble crawl, is that even worth the investment? You might as well just stand up and run. When are you crawling? Okay, again, there has to be some weird circumstance where I'm trying to hide. You know, that's the only reason I would think about it is I'm trying to get the, the ability to, to get the cover uh, without having cover and I can hide. So maybe as a rogue and I'm gonna be, you know, cat burglar crawling around some areas but man this is circum or uh, situational and even if i'm like you know master is okay now i can crawl at full speed all right and then legendary now i can crawl and not be flat-footed so there it starts to be worth it but wow the crawl action out of the box sucks straight up sucks so that's my assessment ladies and gents crawling 
hopefully that was useful because man, I thought for sure this would be a quick, easy video, but then I started digging deep and I'm like, wow, there's some, there's some questions I have. There's some, there's some problems I'm seeing here. And I don't know if you understand better or have a different explanation for why crawl might be good or is, is not situational. I would love to hear about it down in the comments. Please go ahead and leave a comment on it. Otherwise, if you enjoy this type of vid, you want to see more about these basic training, how to do stuff in Pathfinder using the basic actions. And this one, I thought it would be as basic as it gets, and man, was I surprised that it wasn't. I actually grabbed three different actions here, crawl, drop, prone, and stand. So they all kind of go together, I feel. Uh, but I feel like there's maybe some, some house rolling in here. Maybe drop prone is free action. I don't see why, why it wouldn't be. Like just drop prone and start crawling. At least that would make it a little more sensible. Especially drop prone and then you're going to take cover because that's, they say with that, that take cover here. Taking cover might also require them to drop prone, such as if they want to take cover on their table. Most of the time you can let them combine these two. So if I can drop prone, take cover, and the GM course says you can just combine those two, why can't we just combine drop prone crawl as a single action? That sounds fair. So that's the way I would rule it, at least to make it a little more, you know, pleasant. And then maybe standing from a crawl, also you could combine that. So if you crawl and then stand, you know, maybe that's a, that's another combined action. I don't see why that would be so crazy. I can drop prone and crawl, that's one action. I can crawl, stand up, that's two actions. Is that so bad? Especially if you're penalizing difficult terrain and diagonal movement. I don't know. You tell me. Like, subscribe, notify, comment, all that fun stuff. Have yourself a good night. Take care. Peace out.